somebody with You were listening to bad. the Bad Boy you Radio like Show like with Mr. Show. Locario and Miles Cunningham. This is that real shit, not that fake shit. The only radio show that's not afraid to tell you the truth about the game. This is the Bad Boy Radio Show. Remember, the truth is inside you. Yeah. What's popping? What's going on? Are we on? Yeah, man. We on. We on. It's the All Bad right. Boy Show. All right. All right. So what's good? So today, today topic, today's topic is how to have more sex with women, okay? Because I know a lot of guys, you're out there, you're like, man, I just want to get fucking... You know, sex. I just want to get my dick wet. So, you know, I'm going to you, tell, tell you guys. Wanna, <laughs> just want to fuck her right in the pussy. That's, exactly. That's exactly. So we're going to be talking about that. <laughs> you feel me? It's very important because, you know, sometimes you don't feel like hearing a chick, you know, talk and, you know, do all the other extra stuff and having to spend a lot of time with her. So you might just want to have sex. So you got to set your shit up so that you can, you know, have a little bit more more sex, less talk. More sex, less going out on dates. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, right. you, you, you know, there's going to be situations where, you know, you have to talk at some point. You understand? Because you got to approach her, talk to her, all that other stuff. But I'm just saying, you want to get it to a situation mm-hmm. where you got a team of girls. You got, you know, chicks you could call up on. You you know, you meet a chick one night and hit it and you make it happen. So, we're going to give you some tips on that. You feel me? But before we get into that, right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And we'll be back on the Bad Boy Show. Hey, what's up? It's dating and life coach Mr. Locario. Go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my Bad Boy Membership program. In this program, you'll receive 45 through 90 minute, easy to follow, step-by-step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract, date, and have sex with beautiful women. Join the Bad Boy Membership today by going to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com. Yeah. All right, people. We're back on the Bad Boy Show. So, um, is, we get we got some news to talk about, man, because there's a lot of it's a lot of shit going on in the news, man. It's yeah, man, it's crazy. So, uh, you know, Prince is 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 gone. It's a wrap. Everybody's been talking about Prince for the past week, you know. So yeah. he um. He died because I don't know why he died. They're saying, you know, people are saying he died from a cold. Some people are saying, you know, the Illuminati it, killed it him. Was the, the flu. Yeah, the flu. Yeah. <laughs> Some people saying the, right. the Illuminati killed him. Some people are saying, uh, you know, that he was high on drugs or whatever. I don't know. You understand? He was. A, he was they, some people say he was addicted to painkillers and he might have OD'd on the painkillers, uh, the painkiller uh, Percocet. Right. So it's it's all this shit out here, man. I mean, you know, I, I believe that the you know, the the people in power fucked his shit up. You feel what I'm saying? That's right, that's what I think. Right. I really think that is really what happened. You feel what I'm saying? Right, right. Cause, well let, let, let me let me say something real quick. So right. I am I am a Prince fan. I'm a grown ass man. I'm I'm thirty five years old and I cried uh when I heard the news. Um not immediately but it was, you know, because I ain't no, I ain't no bitch, 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 nigga. But, but you know, <laughs> but nah, for real though, like you know, growing up and listening to Prince, and I mean, I love Michael Jackson, but Prince is like Prince is for me is a different nigga. Like his music found its way into certain intricate parts of my life where his music has affected me heavily. You know right. what I'm saying? And um, there's nothing I could do about it. So once I heard that he died, my spirits went very low. And then once I started, like, just remembering certain, like, particular songs from Prince that, you know, that I love, and and I realized that the guy who created those songs that I love so much is really not here anymore. Yeah, like, I was at work at the time. I had to go in the fucking bathroom, and I I started, like, whimpering in the fucking, in the bathroom stall. And so I just wanted to... I did. I, I mean, and then then I went to the gym and I was fucking crying in the shower. So I don't know, you know, it, it's fucked up. But I just, I'm just saying that to say that's how important his music um, was to me as as a, as a fan, as a person. But what I also want to say is, that if you're a true Prince fan, you remember the song "Let's Go Crazy." Um, in the song, he says, 
if the elevator tries to break you down, then go crazy, right? Right. And and in the beginning, he talks about dearly beloved, trying to get to this thing called life, so on and so forth, and he talks about the after afterlife. But the point is, is, he said, when if the elevator tries to break you down, go crazy. Now, during there was an interview he did. They asked him, "What do you mean when you say the elevator?" He said, "The elevator is the devil." Right. Right. They also said in the news report that he was found in an elevator. Oh wow. Dead. Now, this was this news was given by his his people, his family members. Right. So there was a family member who who's in the comp who's on the complex with him because he died in his complex. They said that he was found on the elevator. Now, what I'm saying to you is this. I don't know if I don't know what exactly killed him, right? Right. And we don't really know if he was actually found on the elevator. But, you know, you could believe in coincidences or you could believe in conspiracies, right? Right. However, remember, he wrote in the fucking song, the elevator's going to try to break you down. Mm -hmm. And when the elevator tries to break you down, go crazy. Right. Now, he could have been found in the hallway. He could have been found in his bed. He could have been found anywhere. Mm -hmm. But why, fucking why, did they report that he was found in the elevator? Right, right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. They made a point to say he was found in the elevator. Mm -hmm. See, they, they know see, what they're doing. I, is anything connecting here? They like, know what they're doing. The point I'm trying to make is that his family who reported this shit, they're not trying to say nothing, but to the people who know, right. they're saying something. Right, you understand exactly, what I'm saying? exactly. Exactly. Because if the nigga was in pain and taking painkillers and shit, ain't you supposed to be in your bed? What the fuck you doing in the elevator? Right, right, right. You understand me? The pe they're not they can't say anything because the people who are responsible for for all this shit is they're listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the only way they can really say what they needed to say is reporting that the nigga was found in a fucking elevator. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right, right. Exactly. They're letting you know without actually, like, saying anything. Saying it because literally, he can't right. say anything. Right. Because his sister just inherited his billion-dollar estate and fortune. You understand? Mm, right. And, and and in order for her to keep, in order for his family and the people who are who have his best interest at heart to keep that shit steady from mm. the powers that be, they right. can't fucking, they can't run around and say, nah, some weird shit was going down, and we think this and we think that. They can't say that. But what they said was, he was found in the elevator, son. I don't think that's a fucking coincidence, personally. Right. But whatever. Right, right. I mean, you see how you see how you see how I'm getting like the shit is. America is is crazy. Like this place is crazy. Mm -hmm. Being black in America is crazy. When you get too powerful, mm -hmm. when you reach when you fucking reach a billion dollars and you have influence, something always fucking happens to you, my nigga. True. Think about that. It's shit. true. Think about Dave Chappelle. Think about Dave Chappelle running to fucking Africa after a fifty-five million dollar deal. Mm -hmm. Think about Michael Jackson acquiring the rights to the Beatles catalog, which is what, which is worth well over a billion dollars, plus all the money Michael Jackson had already with his own catalog. Right. As soon as he gets to that point, they kill him. Fucking Bill Cosby tries to buy NBC. All these bitches come out talking about, oh, he tried to rape me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now Prince finally acquired. He's been in an 18 year lawsuit right. with, his, with Warner Brothers, and finally got the rights to his 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 his, his um his entire music catalog. Mm -hmm. And now he's dead. Right. And he was found in a fucking elevator. Mm -hmm. You see? Like, what? Th this is this is this is not a fucking game. But the the the, the fucked up part is that we like we're past the looking glass. Mm -hmm. Meaning, black people in this country, we could, like, they could, right now, President Obama and fucking George Bush could come right out on TV right now and say, hey, listen, we killed Prince, we did 9-11, mm -hmm. and, and, and we don't really give a fuck. We let y'all niggas know because we already know y'all asleep and ain't nothing y'all gonna do about it. Right. And... <laughs> Niggas would get up and go to work the next day like nothing happened. Like right, that. right, exactly. <laughs> that's what. That's where this country is now. That's where it is. Mm -hmm. That's where it fucking is. 
So all right, Peter Prince. And when Jay Z gets to the point where he's about to reach a billion dollars and and he's in a position to influence, they gonna kill his ass too, and ain't nobody gonna say shit. It's true. It's true. That shit is real talk. That's exactly what's gonna happen. It's real talk. It's real talk, man. That shit is crazy. That shit is crazy because they don't, you know, they don't want, they don't want, you know, a, a black, especially a dude like Prince, right? People don't know that Prince was awake. Like he knew what the fuck was going on. He was speaking out about shit because Prince, he didn't do that many interviews. But when he did, he would, you know, say certain shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like he was talking all of that political shit. He was talking all, you know, shit that's actually going down in these streets. So he understood. Plus he was, you know, giving a lot of money to charity. He was, you know, actually helping other black people out. You feel what I'm saying? So now if, if when he's in a position where he has his entire catalog and he has all this, you know, money, power and influence, you understand? They can't, they can't let that happen. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and that's Yo, the how nigga the was worth down. over a billion dollars. A right, worth over a billion dollars before he acquired the rights to his catalog. Right now, he has the rights to his catalog. Mm-hmm. Yo, do you know what type of power and influence he was about to have? Right. Not to mention the fact that when he makes a song on a worldwide level, it it moves people. My nigga, mm-hmm. it influences people. Right. That's what I'm saying. That man. that crazy. type of power. That type of power cannot. That type of power cannot be overlooked. By the people who who need to control shit, you right, right, me? right, exactly. Because they it don't, can't they don't be overlooked. If they don't want that shit, they don't want it. See, that's the, that's the thing that people don't understand. A lot of these actors, a lot of these artists, and all of that other stuff. Yeah, they'll they'll say this and they'll say that, and they you don't do all these little things. But you gotta understand the fact that they are signed to somebody. The fact that there's somebody still you know writing their checks and doing all the other stuff. They're still. Uh, basically like employees or you could say slaves to that system mm-hmm. so if a dude yep. like Prince is like yo I got my own shit I'm gonna do all my own shit plus I got the money and power and influence to do it they can't they can't control what you say you feel what I'm saying they can't tell you not to say it they can't shut your shit down if, if you're trying to put it out you feel what I'm saying like it's so they're like yo we we that makes them nervous you feel what I mean so very nervous that's son. how it go that's very how it nervous go. yo Prince was basically the mayor of the, the fucking mayor of his town in um in 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 Minneapolis where where he's at because mm. his complex his complex like people people come to his complex for parties and events all right. the time right and he'll he'll do shit like if if somebody needs something or if like there's a section of the town that needs money and raise money to raise money for like a community center or some shit right. he'll have an event and charge five or ten dollars a head. Mm-hmm. Simply and take a hundred percent of that money and give it to the organization that's building the after school program. My right, nigga. right. He does that type of shit. That's why right now, if you go to where he's at by his complex, there there are fucking flowers, candles, pictures, mad shit. People are still there now. Wow. Holding candles in front of that place right now as I speak. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yo, it, yo, we can stop talking about this shit because you know, ain't really nothing going to change. Cause right. Everybody's fucking asleep. Like, I'm actually reading on fucking Facebook. Niggas is like, oh, y'all niggas need to stop smoking all that weed and chill with the conspiracy theory. Because, you know, he OD'd on some, on some painkillers and y'all, y'all losing your goddamn mind. It ain't that serious. <laughs> like, I'm like, really? Like, you fucking whatever, man. Whatever, man. Right. It's fucking crazy. Like, these dudes... <laughs> I swear, like, you know what it is? It's, it's because, like, people are people are conditioned to to just take everything at face value. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it, it takes a critical thinker to actually, you know, like, not just not take shit at face value. You got to always question shit. You understand what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, you know, when they just feed you all this other crap, you know what I'm saying? That just puts you back to sleep again. You understand? And they just continue to do the same shit over and over again. And you don't realize what's really going on with you in life. You feel what I mean? So it's, it's crazy though, man. It's fucking crazy. But anyway, man, rest in peace to Prince though. You know? Yeah. Rest in peace to the God, man. For real. For real, for real. real, for real. Man. So in other news, your boy Birdman uh, <laughs> <laughs> was at the <laughs> breakfast club. <laughs> and, he, 
<laughs> I mean, everybody probably knows at this point. But anyway, he's at the Breakfast Club. They were supposed to be give, doing an interview with this dude. And so he was upset at, you know, the Breakfast Club because they was, I guess, talking about him and stuff that he's been doing or whatever. So he comes in there and he's like, yo, y'all better put some respect with a K on my name. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, niggas got t-shirts already, my nigga. Exactly, there's already t-shirts <laughs> of that shit, and and people are putting memes up, and dudes is doing parody videos, and it's it's crazy. But see, you know, it's funny though. This this is the funny part about the whole shit is that, see, a dude like Birdman or anybody like him, you see how he got all emotional, and he was right. like mad that they were saying shit about him and all this other stuff. You know, right. th- see, people usually get mad when. When a person is on some bullshit, that's when they get mad because you're you're sort of pulling a card now. You're sort of you're sort of showing that they on some fraudulent bullshit. So that's why he came in there sort of like, you know, what I'm saying like upset because he, he knew he didn't really have no response for the type of shit they were saying. You feel what I mean? Right. So, right. so that's what usually happens. This, this is why I tell people, look, it's better to just be honest. You understand? Be like, listen, this is what I did. I fucked up or this is what I'm doing or, you know, fuck you. I'm doing this. How I'm going to do it because people are going to call you out on what you're doing. So if you honest, then it's like, yo, I already done said I did that. Or you already know I do like you do that type of shit. You feel what I mean? But when you're trying to front and fake, like you ain't, you know, done no no bullshit, then, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Then when they call you on it, then when you want to come into the the radio station acting like, oh, y'all need to respect my name and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, but dude, you did mad like shit. You, You know, the whole shit with fucking, um, uh, Little Wayne and not putting out his album and allegedly he him and Young Thug or whoever or they was orchestrating that shit to get uh, Little Wayne killed on his tour bus or whatever or some shit right. you know what I'm saying like all these different the, things all like the kissing shit right the kissing and stuff the, 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 the gay rumors right like the all fact the- that you the fact that when you first started you was you was repping the blood uh, mm-hmm. the fucking crypt now right. you're supposed to be a blood nigga like right yeah. it's like it's like all these things all over the place. It's like so when so when you come up there and you talk about respect my name or respect my name and all this other stuff and it's like, dude, but you 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 did some some ridiculous shit. So and of course they're gonna talk about it because they they're the media. You feel what I'm saying? So right. And then this was your For- chance to actually clear the air, if anything, because if if the, if if all they was talking was bullshit, exactly. all you had to do right. was sit down and say, look, this is the real deal. This was really going on. But he knew right. he ain't really had nothing to say because it's like certain things he knew he probably was fucking up on, and then he didn't have no answer for it. You know what I'm Yo saying? Got no recourse, none. And the <laughs> thing is, too, you you a grown ass man, right? You right. you've been in hip hop industry for years. You made a lot of money. Everybody knows you. At this point, if you still running up in a fucking radio station, uh, basically begging for respect, right? Then something's wrong. Exactly. Something's wrong. <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry, but something's wrong. But like, see, that's that's what happened. That's what happened with fake dudes, though. Like, you know who else would would be on some? Sick... Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Watch your mouth, Playboy. <laughs> the respect on his name, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> hey, be... we'll say it again. <laughs> now nah, he gonna come after us now and shit. <laughs> hey, let him come. Shit, you saw how many fucking views? Uh, I know. Breakfast them... Club got. Yo, Breakfast Club got like. Come. That shit on YouTube is like five million right now. I think. Hell yeah! I'm like, Hell God yeah. damn! Like that's <laughs> crazy. And you know what's funny? Who you know who else would probably act like that? Drake. Like, if, oh yeah, because you know if Drake yeah. came on, because you know you haven't, you know what, you know what I noticed about Drake though. That's the funny part. Drake seemed like like he don't really do interviews. When's the last time you see saw a Drake interview? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, and and yeah. this he'll do a lot. And this nigga has an album coming out like this week, my nigga. You feel right. what I'm saying? So, right. like, so, has he ever been on the Breakfast Club? Never. This nigga's never been on the Breakfast Club. You feel exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. And the reason, and the thing, the reason why I think this is that you don't see that many Drake interviews is because, like. Soon as they interview this nigga, they're gonna be like, "So you got niggas ghost writing for you?" You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. And then he's gonna have right. to fess up. You feel what I mean? He's gonna have to say something. So he's sort right. of like, "Well, let me just not say sh- or be in that situation to answer to nobody." You feel what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. So, exactly. <laughs> well, he, you know what it is with Drake too, and and you know, not to offend anyone, but Drake is light skinned He's very, very light skinned <laughs> So. That's a that's a thing. That's a thing. Being light skin causes you to be a little bit more sensitive to to the sun <laughs> right. and to many other things in life. So, 
<laughs> so um, he... but <laughs> um, oh. oh, but no. Another thing I want to add too is that I saw a clip because um, uh, Nori does these like little these like hip hop interviews and stuff right, with his podcast. Cool. Yeah. Did you did you see the one where he was talking to KRS? Right, right. He talked about Drake with the ghostwriting. Yeah. So so he he mentioned right. He mentioned the, the ghostwriting. So it was really interesting what I heard KRS say. KRS said. He don't really see a problem with it, mm-hmm. but he said the thing the thing that Drake should know is that to the niggas who write all their rhymes, right, you you're gonna look like a le- lesser you know like a lesser MC. Right, That's just the way it is. Right, he said you know to the fans and you know to the fact that you're creating hot shit, you know with help and all that. He said there's no real problem because hip hop is hip hop, and if you add into the culture, then you add into the culture. However, right, don't expect. Niggas that write they they rap a hundred percent from the gut to respect you on that level, right? You know what I'm right, exactly. And that's just that's just where it is. And I thought that was pretty fair, um, you know, from KRS, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. So that that's that, that's real talk from KRS. So I mean, I think something like that could put that whole ghostwriting shit to rest because it's like, yeah, if you if you're the nigga that that you write your raps a hundred percent from the gut, okay, you'll have a problem with it, but you can't deny. A hot song is a hot fucking song. You right, feel me? right. So it is exactly. what it is. Exactly. So in, in other music news, uh, before we go on break, um, so your girl Beyonce, she came oh, out with this yeah. song. <laughs> I think the song's called Lemonade. I don't know why. I, I, never, I haven't listened to the song, but I have like some lyrics from the song. And so people are, are, are saying that the song is about J- her and Jay-Z and how Jay-Z cheated on her or whatever. You feel what I'm saying? And so right. I'm, I'm going to say some of the songs, I mean, some of the lyrics that I have here and, you know, um, we'll, we'll see what's going on. So it says, I'm the dragon, I'm the dragon breathing fire, beautiful man. I'm the lion, beautiful man. I know you're lying. Oh, she's spitting wow. fire right now. Hold on. Let me see. Jay-Z <laughs> wrote that shit. I mean, Jay-Z <laughs> wrote that shit. <laughs> she said, <laughs> she said, I'm, I'm smelling the fragrance on your Louis V boy. Just give me. My fat ass and a big kiss, boy. Tonight, I'm fucking up all your shit, boy. And she said, this is your final warning. You know I give you life. If you try this shit again, you're going to lose your wife. Oh, she's she, she going in on this nigga. She's spinning ether on this nigga. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> she said, looking at my watch, he should have been home. Today, I regret the night I put that ring on. He's always going to come with fucking excuses oh shit okay he said um he only want me when i'm not there he better call becky with the good hair oh shit oh shit beyonce is spitting fire the last one i got here the last one i got here you got more you got more oh shit one more it says my my daddy warned me about men like you he said baby girl he's playing you so she she's saying a lot of shit in here man She's wow. saying, but you know it's funny that that line where she talked about he better call Becky with the good hair. That that right there just lets me know that Beyonce she's on some slick shit right here. Let me tell you why she's on some slick shit. <laughs> Yo, Jay, this this ain't this ain't about Jay cheating on Beyonce. Even if he did, this ain't even about that. Is right. All they doing? Let me man, man. Okay. All they're go, doing, go, go, do, go, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, all they doing is fucking hyping up the beehive, the the Beyonce supporters, you know, right? Uh, which is a lot of black women. You feel what I'm saying? Right. To to right. To, to make them feel, you know, that 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 single woman angst, that that yeah. fucking yeah, anger girl, they have inside. That nigga, girl, you don't need him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then she threw in that line about Becky with the good hair because right. she she's playing off the whole, you know, black woman mad at the black men going after the white girls and all that other right. stuff. Man, these these right. motherfuckers are marketing geniuses. Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm I'm gonna put you I'm gonna I'm put you on some shit. So, I was on World Star the other night and right. there was a video that said, "Oh, um the some I, I didn't even pay attention to her name cuz she's like really a nobody." Like right. but it says, you know, like, say her name is Classy B or some shit. I have no right, idea. Right. So it said Classy B, um, the girl that uh, that Beyonce allegedly caught Jay Z cheating with. Right. Did a did a music video, blah blah blah. So I listen. I watched the music, some of it anyway. 
And I made it up to a part where she said, me and Mr. Carter never, never had sex or we never fucked or some shit. Right. But she, she explained in the song that her and, and Mr. Carter never fucked. So right. her and Jay-Z never had sex. So she's basically the girl who, who did this video. She looked like she's trying to capitalize off the rumors as well. Right, exactly, exactly. You understand? Because people are only going to listen to the fucking song just to see what you're talking about if right. you really cheated with Jay-Z on Beyonce. So it seems to be a whole quagmire where it's like people want it's people, you know, it's very um sensational to think that Jay Z might be cheating on Beyonce. Right. So they're basically capitalizing off the whole shit. You understand? Know mm-hmm. Basically. That's all that that's all I think it really is. Basically. That's all I think that's it really what I think because I'm like, come on, dog. Like really? Cause, cause even you, you gotta think about this, man. Is it's all about the money. You feel what I'm saying? All so, about yep. So yep. so is it is it worth is is it going to be worth more money for Jay Z and Beyonce to stay together or to for them to break up? You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. Because together they they almost at like a billion dollars or some shit together, right? Yep. Together. So, yep. So even if let's say like in real life, like Jay Z and Beyonce just chilling at home, Netflixing and chilling, you know what I'm saying? Like they just chilling at home, you know, on some regular shit. You feel what I'm saying? Jay Z could have just came home from fucking some other girl you understand beyonce could have just got her black her back blown out by some other nigga you feel what i'm saying right they don't care you understand like you gotta understand all this you know oh infidelity he cheated on me and all that that that's that's poor people shit you feel what i'm saying exactly that's poor people shit. <laughs> real fucking talk you get yeah, you get an applause for that like real shit real. <laughs> Real shit, cause check check Will and Jada, like seriously, mm-hmm. check Will and Jada. Right. It's like <laughs> that's to the straight poor people shit, man. Like, cause because that's the type of shit you know you'll sort of like argue about because you, oh my man cheated this and that. Yeah, that's cool and all, but look, it's gonna it's gonna keep us. You know, we gonna stay rich together. So do it. You know, get your dick sucked and and you fuck this guy. I don't care as long as the papers flow in. That's exactly. all. It, that's all it is. Cause ain't, ain't, listen, if you got millions and millions and millions of fucking dollars, and your your fucking PR person says, "Listen, y'all motherfuckers are stand to lose a whole bunch of shit if y'all break up, but if y'all stay together, y'all stand to fucking make this amount more this year." You understand? Them niggas right. gonna stay together, even just even if it's just if, for the public eye. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And Jay Z right. and Beyonce could be cheating on each other till the fucking cows come home, but you'll never you'll never find out. You feel what I'm saying? Right. You will never find out because at the end of the day, it's all about the money, and that's and that's what basically this fucking song's about. Because you know, I, I bet you how much you want to bet there's gonna be an interview at some point later where Beyonce or Jay is gonna talk about the song, and they're gonna be like, oh well, you know. The song was more, it wasn't really about us. It was just from the perspective of a woman who's been scorned and blah, 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 right, blah, blah, right. blah. You feel what I'm saying? After y'all done made her platinum, this then she's going to come out and say the real the real joint. You understand? Right. So they could just cover their tracks. So that's all that, that's all that shit is. You feel what I'm saying? They but seriously, too, but seriously, too, like, at the stage that they're both at, I right. don't really know if cheating on each other really makes sense at right. this point. Exactly, exactly. Because like, it, like, okay, we're we're this rich. Like, I don't need to cheat on you. I can just be honest and let you know that I'm about to fuck an escort, if anything. Right, exactly. <laughs> because Jay Z, Jay Z's not gonna fuck a regular bitch. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He's not, and he's not gonna fuck a regular celebrity bitch neither. Because right. TMZ's always watching. Mm-hmm. People are always watching. So if Jay Z goes into a fucking hotel. And then 20 minutes later, Rihanna goes into a hotel right. and then Jay-Z leaves and then Rihanna leaves. Automatically, that's a problem. So right. what's going to really happen is if Jay-Z needs to get his dick wet someplace else, he's going to let her know, look, I just paid 1500 for this fucking top class escort. I'm about to go handle my business. I'll be right back. Type right. Shit. You feel exactly. me? Exactly. Exactly. Because that's where we're at. Like, we're a billion dollar family. Like, there's no... You know, there's no snapping your fingers and rolling your eyes at me. Like, right. we're on a different level. <laughs> you know right. It's, it's, it's just like that that show House of Cards. Like, you know, the, the 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 if you watch House of Cards, you know, it's like that political show with Kevin Spacey and shit. And him and his wife, they they on some shit. Like, listen, man, I know you fucking other chicks. I know you trying to you fucking other dudes. But let's try to win this fucking election. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's all it's about. You understand? Like, they're not worried about none of that petty shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. 
That's right. crazy. So I'm, I'm I'm sure it's the same way with Jay Z and Beyonce or any any of these other like big rich couples. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Kanye and Kim yeah, Kardashian yeah. getting it in somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So you know, it's it is what it is, man. It is what it's fuck it is. But listen, uh, we're gonna go on a break real quick. Uh, when we come back, we're gonna be talking about how to get more sex with uh, more women. All right, you're listening to the Bad Boy Radio Show. Do you want to learn the easiest way to have more sex with more women? Then get the critically acclaimed book, How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. In this book, you'll learn everything you need to know about attracting and sleeping with beautiful women. That's How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. Get your copy today at MrLocario.com. That's M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. MrLocario.com. Are you an actor who needs headshots? Do you have an event or a wedding coming up and you need a photographer? If you do, make sure you go to pavionphoto.com. Pavion is a professional photographer who will supply you with high quality video and photography services for any event. Contact him at pavionphoto.com. That's P A V I O N photo.com. Pavionphoto.com. All right, people. We're back. We are back on the Bad Boy yeah. Show. So, guys, um, today's topic, man, we're going to be talking about how to have more sex with women, how to get more sex, how to make this happen. Because, you know, I, you know, I get emails all the time where dudes are like, yo, these chicks are crazy out here. How come I can't get no ass? And what do I need to do? And what do I need to say? And blah, 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 blah. And all this other stuff. You feel what I'm saying? So Mr. Lucario, <laughs> my penis is dry. Help me. Help exactly. Me. So it's like, yo. <laughs> so, you know, is is you got to understand, you know, getting sex, right? You know, or, or having a lot of sex, right? Um, On the front end, you got to put in a little bit of effort to, you know, make that happen in in certain cases but you know the best way to do this is actually to get a team of women to get you know a couple of girls you know four to maybe five girls in rotation that you're basically you know having sex with while you're also trying to you know talk to other girls and this and this and that but i'm going to give you some tips on how to get sex more easily so what i'm saying is is that you know some more tips on on actually just getting to sex quicker you understand instead of having to go on like you know three four dates having to talk to and text back with girls all the time and do all this other nonsense you feel what i'm saying so and and for any of you guys who want to uh you know learn more about this make sure you go to badboymembership.com today and you can listen to my audio program which is titled just have sex with her how to have sex without going on dates and that shit is fire okay that shit is crazy yes and i also have another audio program on there that's called 10 easy and fast ways to get more sex okay yo you know what's crazy the amount of audio like if you sign up now the amount of audio stuff the amount of programs that you have like to listen to Mm. it's ridiculous like you have to You'd have to sit on your computer or, you know, because you, we can, you, you can access it on your phone now, right? Yeah, you can access it on your iPhone and everything. So you'll yeah, be there all day. Yeah, you'd have to sit there with your headphones for like a day and a half to actually listen to everything. Like, right, exactly. So that's no, how much... and no going to the bathroom, no no eating, <laughs> no nothing. Just... <laughs> and that's how much information is on there. So that's what I'm telling you guys. You got to make sure you go to Bad Boy Membership dot com today to join the membership this shit is fire okay because when you listen because the stuff that we're going to be talking about today is just going to be a little it's a little sneak preview you understand we're just giving you we're giving you the 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 bread and the cheese you understand we're not giving you the the, the fucking whole uh sandwich we're not giving you the meat and the lettuce and the mayonnaise and all that shit you got to go to bad boy membership for that you feel what i'm saying because we don't have enough time <laughs> on the show to do all that you feel what i'm saying right right so I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to make sex happen faster. Okay. So, and this is in no order of importance. I got like six things here that we're going to talk about. And the first thing I want to talk about is being direct when you approach and talk to women. Okay. 
So what that means is, you know, when you guys go and uh, t- approach women and talk to women, you know, there's usually two main ways that you do it. You either do indirect or you do direct. You understand? So indirect is like you see a girl at a, you know, a bus stop. You say, hey, you know, how long you been waiting for this bus? And then she's like five minutes. And then you also get start getting into a conversation. You know, you say, hey, my name is Locario. She's like, hi, I'm Judy or whatever. And then I start talking and blah, 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 blah. Right now when you're direct right you're directly letting the girl know that you're interested now if you want to and so the direct way would be you go up to the to the you know bus stop whatever you see her you say hey you know what's going on how you doing look you know i came over here i thought she was really cute you know um here's my number give me your number let's get together and do something right now when we talk about being direct especially when we're talking about you trying to have sex right all you need to do is say these two simple words when you're when you're going direct and talking to a girl hook up that's it okay so you're not asking her for a date you're not saying hey let's go to the park and hold hands and and go get a drink no you walk up to her hey miss how you doing my name is locario listen i thought you were really attractive i had to come over here i would definitely love to get together with you and hook up that's it you understand? So hooking up is basically the nice way of saying, I want to fuck this shit out you. You feel what I'm saying? So that's, that's really, you know, and if you're, if you're, if you're uh, comfortable enough or bold enough, you could say, Hey, I want to have sex with you, whatever, whatever. But you still have to sort of feel out the girl, you understand? And see how she, you know, interacts. And a lot of times, you know, if you, if you go bold and say, Hey, I want to sex, you know, I want to have sex with you. I want to fuck you, whatever. A lot of chicks are going to, uh, you know, automatically, fall back or or be like oh my god i can't believe you said that yum, 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 yum. you feel what i'm saying <laughs> they're gonna say that because they're they're automatically um programmed to do that you feel what i'm saying so don't don't get all like scared about that because girls are usually programmed to say that or say that when you know or be like that when a guy approaches her that direct because a lot of guys don't go direct because they're scared you feel what I'm saying? Right. So the thing is, is that if you go direct and you tell a girl, hey, you know, I want to hook up. What happens is, is that if that chick also is interested in hooking up with you, right, she's going to be cool with it. You understand what I'm saying? She's going to be like, OK, cool. You know, and she's giving you the number under the, the you know, the thought process of you guys hooking up. You understand? So when you call her or you, you, you know, you send her a text or whatever to get together. Right. She already has in her mind that y'all are going to hook up. You feel what I'm but saying? But Mr. Lucario, <laughs> what if what if what if this bitch trying to play dumb and she says some shit like, right. "So, uh, what do you mean by hooking up?" Then you tell her, "Look, I want to fuck the shit out of you." <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And hey, and when you say that shit, don't blink. Either. Exactly. Like, in my fucking eyes, like, yo, I want to fuck the shit out of you. You see how you look in that fucking skirt, bitch? I want to. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Nah, it's real talk because, because look, you, you saying, cause you got to understand something. You telling her that you want to hook up is you basically, um, you know, you're, you're, you're the, the, the words hooking up is for her. And what I mean by this is that a chick wants to fuck you. Don't see, this is what guys got to understand. There's a lot of girls who are going to want to have sex with you, right? They are waiting for you to give them the green light, the go ahead to, to feel comfortable enough to you know, uh, put their sluttiness quote unquote out there. You understand what I'm saying? So when you say hook up, right. And she, uh, she agrees to hook up with you. She gives you the number or whatever, right. She's agreeing based upon, Oh good. This guy actually said, said it that way. So I don't feel like too much of a slut. You understand what I'm saying? To, to give him my information. Now, if she's playing dumb, and acting like, oh, well, what do you mean by hooking up? I mean, I want to fuck the shit out of you. Now I had to, I had to say it now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, this is what we're, we got to that point. So now I've gotten you to the point where we had to get it to that point because you weren't cooperating. You see what I'm saying? Now, if she still wants to do it, then she'll do it. You understand? But uh, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to get a lot of drawback from her anyway because she wasn't initially cooperating in the first place when you just said hook up do you see what i'm saying so the thing is is that it's better to just say hook up first so you can sort of like see her reaction and see her vibe with that do you understand what i'm saying and then if she's cool with it then you know it's it's going down you understand but if she's on that oh you know what do you mean by that blah 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 blah, 
then you just got to come out and straight up and say, be like, you know, and you could be like, look, you know, I think you're really attractive. We're both grown people. And, you know, I think we should get together, have some sex and you, whatever, whatever. You see what I'm saying? So you, you basically, but what you got to do is you got to make sure she knows before you leave her that that's what you're trying to do. You feel what I'm saying? So that when she gives you the number, when y'all exchange numbers, that's already understood that that's what you and her are going to make happen. You feel what I'm saying? So the thing is, when you do that, the difference between you doing that and a guy just approaching her and saying, hey, you know, let me get your number, whatever, you know, that guy is setting him up, setting himself up to basically go on a date. You understand what I'm saying? You're setting yourself up for okay, let's hook up. And you can still take a chick out for a drink if you want to hook up with her. You can bring her, get a, get a drink with her and then take it back to your place or go to her place or whatever it is. But the thing is, is that if you say hook up, it's more that this is what's going to happen and this is the, the situation we're putting ourselves in. You feel what I'm saying? So don't be scared to be direct and tell a chick you want to hook up with them. You feel what I'm saying? So that is the first one. So the second one, and this is so simple. This is really so simple. The second thing you can do to get more sex is just to simply go out more. That's it. Go the fuck out more. Meaning go to more events, go to bars, go to uh, clubs, go to, um, you know, um, whatever. Anything that is street fairs, you have to get outside more. You understand? And when you're outside more. Yo, go to more, karaoke, son. Exactly. Go to karaoke. Go to all these motherfucking just, places. <laughs> they just saying? love that shit. They mm-hmm. love that shit. Cause is, you know, karaoke, if, get them drunk, and, and and you know, and, and you're in there, and then you want to hook up. <laughs> you know, it's funny though because there's a lot of times where I've I've gotten sex simply just by showing up to a place. Like like literally, I showed up, I talked to maybe one or two girls just on some casual shit. And one of those girls, you know, they'll, you know, we end up like, you know, flirting, making out and then going back to her place. You feel what I'm saying? That's just because I was I decided to go out. And there were times where I I wasn't going to go out and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me just go out. And that was the time when shit popped off. You feel what I'm saying? But if I would have stayed home and did nothing, you understand, then I wouldn't have got nothing. You feel what I mean? And the more you go out and the more you um are out in in doing things like let's say in your town or your city or whatever you're doing, figure out what's actually, you know, happening in your city. So for example, I live in New York city and they have a lot of, uh, these, uh, events and I, I find it on meetup.com and I know meetup.com has, you know, it's in other cities, I think too, whatever, but that, that website shows you different events that's going on or different things, even singles events or whatever. And so by me going out, I started to sort of run into, um, the same people, or I started to, you know, um, make friends with other people and they'll tell me about other stuff or whatever it was. So I remember one time I went out and I saw this girl, we were talking to whatever we didn't get together that day, but then I saw her again, like two weeks later at another spot, then we got together and we made shit happen. You feel what I'm saying? And that's because I was, I just kept going outside. I kept going to different places. You feel what I'm saying? So you got to be out there in order to make that stuff happen. Because you, you know, if you're just staying at home all the time, if you're not really going out there mingling and making stuff happen, it's going to be hard for you to really, you know, uh, make shit go down because a lot of dudes, you know, they, they try to sort of do like too much online game, which in an online game is good, but it's like, you want to mix it up with everything. You feel what I'm saying? And when you go out more, you'll, you'll put yourself in a position to have more sex. You feel me? So that's, that's number two is go out more. Now, the third one, the third one is hang out with guys, hang out with other guys who get laid. Okay. (laughs) Hang out with other guys who get laid, who are good with talking with women. Trust me on this. Okay. You got to get yourself some friends who actually know how to talk to girls you understand so let me let me tell you if you guys so let's say you guys are going out and you you know you go out and and um to a bar whatever whatever right all you need to do because let's say you don't have friends like that because let's say you're the type of dude you don't really go out that much you don't really have a a a good social circle or whatever so you're like how the hell am i gonna find friends and guys or whatever like that right so let's say you even go out by yourself let's say you go to a bar you get a drink by yourself and let's say you see like two guys, you know, in there and you see them talking to girls and, and flirting with girls and blah, 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 whatever. Right. All you need to do, this is all you need to do. 
All you need to do is go up to them and, and say, yo, what's good? How you doing? Listen, I see that y'all dudes are really good at talking to chicks. I'm trying to get some chicks out here. Can y'all, you know, help me out? You understand what I'm saying? By simply right. saying that, what you're doing is you're you're feeding their ego because now they feel like they're the shit because they're like, dude, damn, this dude, you know, he thinks that I'm good at getting girls. You feel what I'm saying? So then they, they'll take you under their wing like it's nothing. And then you just become friends with them. You then by the end of the night, you exchange numbers and be like, listen, when y'all going out again, just let me know. You feel what I'm right. saying? So that's all you got to do because what happens is that since those guys are good at talking with women, they'll pull women into the circle that, you know, that you're in. So like right. if, if there's two guys there and, you know, they're talking to some girls and you hanging out with them and, and then they pull some girls to, you know, to the side or they pull some girls in, in this, in the conversation. Now you're in the conversation with girls that they pulled. You understand? So they've, they've already yep. done all the work for you as far as getting the girls there. Now, all you got to do is talk and, and, and keep it going that way. You feel what I'm right. saying? But that wouldn't have happened if you weren't hanging out with the guys who know how to actually talk to girls so you have to become friends with dudes who know how to do that you feel right. what i'm saying and, and you can you can kind of um practice your your uh your own craft by emulating their approaches and techniques right and and notice notice i said emulating because you can't copy you can't really copy because they're them and right. you're you but right. what i when i'm when i say emulate what i mean is take the basic idea or the basic you know, me, me, the basic me, mechanics of what they're doing and then add your spin to it and then make it happen. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I, and, and that's, and you know, when you're hanging out with these dudes who know how to get chicks, you know, there you'll, you'll start to see certain, like you say, you start to see certain things they're doing, you know, observe what's going on, um, you know, flow with the situation because what's going to happen is sometimes is even the other day, right? I had one of my, one of my boys, he hit me up and I was already, I was already out in the city at this other event. So he calls me, he's like, yo, he's like, where you at? I got these two, uh, chicks with me. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, he was trying to like, he, he needed a wingman at that point. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And so the thing is, is that these guys, they, you know, they always, they, they like to be able to have other dudes with them to help them out. Because a lot of times you go to these bars or these clubs or whatever it is. And there's a group of women all the time, girls, they'll travel in packs. So if it's two guys or one guy or two guys, and then you're the third dude, you're just basically helping them get laid by you just right. being there. You feel what I'm saying? Because Cause, cause chicks, <laughs> chicks can't do shit on their fucking own. Exactly. That's number one. So exactly. they always, they always there with at least one girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you need to, you, you need to be able to, you know, accommodate the other girlfriend because if you're only talking to one of them then the other one is going to be a cock blocking ass bitch right. for the whole night exactly so you need yeah exactly, exactly. And, and, and you know it's funny it's because <laughs> if if because this, this happened to me before too i remember uh there was this dude at this i was at the spot there was a dude at this spot talking to this chick right so I see him talking to the chick and then there was, she was with her friend. So her friend was just sort of standing there looking lonely. So then I jump into the conversation and I, I talk to the friend, right? So he gives me this look like, dude, thank God you came to, to, you know what I'm saying? Keep this other chick occupied. You feel what I mean? Like he didn't even say it, but I saw it on his face. Like, you understand? So next thing you know, him and the other girl is like, you know, they, they walked off to the side or whatever. And then me and the other, me and the girl I was talking to, we were sitting down and we're having a conversation, whatever. Right. So next thing you know, that guy goes to the bathroom and then her friend goes over to me and her friend. And she's like, she says to her friend, she's like, yo, I really like this guy and I want to take him back to the hotel. And, you know, but I, you know, I want you to come back. And she was like, and you can bring your friend with you. Right. So the friend she was telling, talking about was me. Cause I'm standing there next talking to her, her, her girlfriend. Right. So by me just basically being there, talking to the other girl since she wanted to fuck that guy she wanted her friend to like come back to the hotel and since i'm talking to her friend i end up getting sex just off of that do you understand this is why i'm saying like it's important to you know um hang out with guys who know how to talk to women and get laid because you could be that guy that other guy that's there holding it down talking to the other girl 
And then if that other girl wants to to have sex with the dude or or fuck with the other guy, you understand? You mo you're more likely to get sex because you're right there. You understand what I'm saying? And you're occupying the other girl because a lot of times girls don't want to have sex, but then they'll, they'll end up not having sex because their girlfriend doesn't have anyone to have sex with. So right. Gonna, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Since chicks can't do anything by themselves, mm-hmm. if they're going to go fuck, then they want to make sure that the girl is fucking too. Exactly. You feel me? Exactly. And this is why you got to make sure you hang out with dudes who get pussy. You feel me? I believe, I believe it. I believe it's called pussy by diffusion <laughs> or pussy by association. Something Probably. like that. <laughs> <Right. laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, make sure you do that. So that's number three. Hang out with other guys who know how to get laid. Now, The fourth thing uh, that's going to help you get sex easy, and this is so important, and a lot of guys have trouble with this, is you have to get rid of you have to get rid of your hangups about sex and how you view women sexually. Okay, you got to get rid of that shit. You got to stop the oh she's a whore or she's a slut she's dirty because she wants to fuck me now. You understand what I'm saying? If you if you think that way, if you keep that in your mind state or you might think, oh, I can't have sex with her right now. Women don't do that. That's disrespectful. I can't I can't just have sex with this girl I just met tonight. She's not going to go for that. See, if you have that in your head, then it's going to be hard for you to actually pull a chick. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you're going to think she doesn't want it or you're going to think it's wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? So your mind state and how you actually look at the situation is going to help you, you know, get it. You understand? Like, because if you think that if you, if you're chilling with a chick and you think that she is not interested in sex or you think, Oh, she's not that quote unquote type of girl, or you think that it's wrong for you to do this, it's going to be hard for you to execute because how, you know, how your mind state is, is how you're going to flow, you know, with your actions. So you got to make sure that you're okay with this situation. And the thing that makes a lot of guys uh, miss out on this is because they sort of, um, you know, they sort of don't, don't understand like the signs that chicks be sending out, or they get confused by how chicks are acting on the surface. So sometimes the chick, she might be, you know, with her friends and is, you know, let's say you with your friends and they're talking to the other girls and you talking to this girl and just the fact that she's with her friend, she might not be sort of flirting with you as much as you would like or think. And then so you interpret that as she's not interested in, in sex. You understand what I'm saying? But the thing is, is that, you know, as you're talking and as you're doing your thing and as you go out more, you'll understand that that's part of the game where you know that, OK, if this chick is um, around her friends, most likely she's going to act a certain way. That doesn't necessarily mean she doesn't like sex. You understand? Or that she does, or she's not interested in having sex tonight and blah, 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 blah. You understand? So the thing is, is that, you know, you have to like understand like what's really going on. And also you have to get rid of like the hangups that you have when it comes to dealing with girls and sex and all that other craziness. You understand? Because, you know, like I, I remember I put out a video a while ago and I was telling dudes like, yo, you got to understand like chicks, they be they be on a sex shit like these chicks be fucking do you understand what i'm saying like they get down you understand like they they make it happen they like to do these things so you can't you know stand around here looking at girls as these innocent del- delicate flowers you know putting on your cape and being a captain save a hoe is that's not gonna make you get sex you understand you have to approach women and 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 think of women as women who want to get down and fuck you like i always say I, when I approach a woman, I assume she wants to have sex with me. That's, that's what I always assume. Like that's, that's my mind state. So when I'm actually talking to her and having a conversation and, you know, flirting with her and everything like that, that's what I think about first. So then that propels me to actually go into the situation on some sexual shit. You feel what I'm saying? Instead of trying to be all tiptoeing and, you know, being this nice guy and it's no, do you understand? That's not going to get you sex. You feel what I'm saying? That's just going to get you in a friend zone. That's going to have her thinking you're some super nice guy. And she's going to be like, ah, I can't do nothing with this guy. You feel what I'm saying? She's like, I want to, I wanted to get fucked, but this guy's talking to me about some other shit. You understand that that's going to be you. If you be on that bullshit, you feel me? So make sure you get rid of those hangups. You feel me? So that's number four. So the number five is the, you know, the easy way to get some sex is if you go on a date, if you go on a date, bring your date to a place that's near your house. 
okay? That means like five minutes driving distance or five minutes walking distance from your house. Okay? Or near the hotel that you like to fuck bitches at. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You got to have her at a spot that's close to those situations. Because if you're, let's say you go out on a drink with it, you know, to take a girl for a drink or whatever. And then y'all start talking, y'all flirting, y'all kissing and everything, you know, when she's all hot and heavy in that situation, you understand? You want to be like, oh, you know, let's go, let's go back to my place. I'm just right down the road. You understand? She's ready and willing to do it at that point. And the quicker you're able to get to your place, the better, because then, you know, that gives her less time to change her mind. You don't want to have a chick thinking um, <laughs> too much <laughs> because when she starts thinking and, you know, the thoughts start popping up and then now she's like, oh, you know, I don't think I should do this and blah, 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 blah. That, you know, that happens. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I remember one time um, I was at some spot in lower Manhattan and this chick, she lived all the way in the upper what was it West side or something, which is like maybe like a hundred and something blocks from where we were at. You understand? So we got, we went back to her place. We went in a cab and it was traffic. So it took us like damn near 45 minutes to get to where she was at. You feel what I'm saying? And while we're in the cab, you know, we was kissing a little bit, but then it was like, I felt the vibe. I was like, Oh, she's going to be on some bullshit. I was like, I, I bet you my life, this chick is going to be on some bullshit when we get to her spot. So when we got to her spot, you know, she was on some bullshit. And so I was like, why? Because we're sitting in there with the kissing or whatever. And then she, she was on some, Oh, you know, I think I'm tired. I, you know, I, I got to get up early in the morning and I'm just like, really? I came a hundred blocks for this shit. It's like, this is, this is terrible. I mean, the good thing though, was I, I didn't pay for the cab to go there. So I, I, it wasn't too, but, but my time was wasted. Oh, anyway. So yeah, so if you if you if you're going on a date, make sure it's near the place you can smash. You understand, and it's going to be easier for you to get the sex. I yeah. hope I hope you didn't have to pay the cab driver because I would have been mad. Oh nah nah nah, she she paid for that shit. So I was I was like, I was like I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like man, but yeah, I got up there. And she was just like oh, she it was it was so funny because I could tell she didn't want to do it anymore. And instead of just instead of just saying she didn't want to do it anymore. She was on some, uh, you know, she was pretending she was tired and shit. I was like, get the fuck out of here. I'm good. <laughs> like, that's some bullshit. That's some bullshit, man. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. So, number five is make sure you, if you're going to date, bring her near your house or hotel or someplace you could smash easily. Right now, the sixth one, the last one we're going to talk about today of how to get, you know, how to have more sex with women is to find women you know, and, and they have like groups and they have events about this stuff. You just got to like Google it in your area or, you know, talk to some people, see what's popping. But you have to find women who are swingers or who are polygamous. You feel what I'm saying? You got to do that. If you want some sex, you got to find chicks who are on that, who are about that life. You feel what I'm saying? Because those women you know, if they're swingers, if they're polygamists, if they're on that shit, they are a little bit more open to sex quicker. You understand? Like they don't need to like, Oh, we got to get to know each other for five dates and all this other nonsense. Like their lifestyle is, is sexual. You understand what I'm saying? Like they're, they're down for that, that shit. So if you find a chick who's, you know, who's about that and who's like, you know, cool with all of that stuff you know it'll be easier to get sex from her versus like a regular chick you might just meet at some bar somewhere you feel what i'm saying and so you know there's a lot of um events because it's like even like where i'm at i'm in um nyc and i'm not sure how the community is in other places but if you find uh you know a community of polygamous people or swingers or whatever it is you know and become friends with them, become cool with them, make that, you know, like have a social circle with, you know, chicks and people like that. Then it's, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll even have people who, let's say you become friends with a guy who's a swinger. He'll hook you up with all the parties. He'll tell you about shit. He'll, you know, throw you some chicks. You understand what I'm saying? So that, you know, that can really boost the amount of sex you can be getting with these chicks. You feel what I'm saying? 
So, yeah, you got to make sure you make that happen. All right. So make sure you find, you know, some swingers and some polygamous chicks. So any, anything else uh, you want to say, Miles, before we get out of here? Because we are done. Yo, the, the, uh, the another tip, the other tip, if you want more sex from me, chick, join the bad boy membership. Exactly. Exactly. Make sure you go to badboymembership.com today and become a member remember you can listen to my audio program just have sex with her and my other audio program 10 easy and fast tips on how to get more sex and those you know the game is so freaking heavy in that and you you know we have other audio and video tutorials on the bad boy membership okay make sure you join today if you do not join you are playing yourself i'm telling you and i'm gonna tell you why it's so important that you join now is because between for a female between the ages of well when are they legal 18 yeah okay between the ages of 29 i mean 18 to 29 chicks want to fuck bad boy mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. it's true once they hit 29 and their looks start to fade that's when they begin to look for you know the nice guys the guys with the steady job right who's gonna marry them and you know buy a house and give them some kids and blah, blah, blah. But <clears throat> from age 18 to 29, that's a window. Mm-hmm. You have to understand the way of the bad boy. Mm-hmm. It's true. You gotta, and you gotta understand how these girls think you gotta understand how they operate because see, there's a, there's, there's a difference between like what chicks say they want and what they respond to. You understand? And I, you know, I, I try to tell people that all the time, like there's a, a huge difference and a lot of times the reason why you're having trouble dealing with chicks is because you're listening too much to what women say they want and you're taking your cues as to how you approach them that way and they say they want certain things but then they respond to different things so in the bad boy membership we teach you what women respond to we teach you what women really are attracted to and what women really want. You feel what I'm saying? So guys, make sure you join the bad boy membership. We will see you guys next week. Also, if you want to listen to more, uh, bad boy show episodes, make sure you go to, I look sexy naked.com and you can hear all the episodes on there. All right. So we're out of here. Remember the truth is inside you. Peace. Hey, what's up? It's dating and life coach, Mr. Locario. Go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my bad boy membership program. In this program, you'll receive 45 through 90 minute, easy to follow, step-by-step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract, date, and have sex with beautiful women. Join the bad boy membership today by going to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com.